Hey, welcome back guys. I hope you're all doing well. Um, welcome to this episode of the SA Pilot. Uh, today's flight, um, it's an interesting one. Um, we're going to be uh, looking at some auto rotations and uh, some engine uh, failures in the hover um, that is in ground effect. Um, first off, I just want to say that I'm not an instructor by any means. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously these. Um, explanations and details uh, are not to be used in any real-world situations. I'm just giving you my opinion uh, based off of my experiences. Um, so we're sitting on the uh, tarmac here um, at Goodwood, uh, just waiting for the oil pressure temperature at sorry oil temperature to rise above 60 degrees. Um, we need to do this in order to uh, pull max power. Um, Normally we wouldn't in the hover, um, but yeah, it just allows us to pull max power um, if needed, uh, basically. So yeah, we're just waiting for that to rise up. Uh, I've done all my checks. Uh, we've done our engine runs. Aircraft's looking really good. Um, yeah, before we uh, lift off into the hover, um, obviously we're um, looking, you know, for warning lights. They're all off. Um, engine oil temperatures and pressures um, just checking that they're all uh, in the green um, there's obviously a little green band um, on that uh, that sort of digital display on the right side of the instrument panel um, so there's a line of gauges at the bottom of that display which obviously give you uh, your engine oil temperatures pressures carb heat um, fuel pressure things like that um, so yeah, you'll see the little yellow light that's now gone out, indicating that we're above 60 degrees on the oil pressure, uh, oil temperature. I don't know why I keep saying oil pressure, <laughs> sorry man. Um, yeah, so we're going to lift up into the hover now. Uh, we're just playing a little bit of right rudder, uh, just to counteract that uh, nose yaw to the left. A little bit of cyclic to the right, and just feeling skids getting sensitive. There they go, boom, into the hover. Um, once we're in the hover, again, just checking the warning lights are out, oil temperatures and pressures are in the green, controls feel normal, and obviously carb heat is onto auto. We'll start progressing over towards the uh, triangle at Goodwood, which is obviously where helicopters take off and arrive. Um, they do also go to the 3-2 numbers, but in this case, obviously, with where the wind is coming from, we're going to be taking off uh, from the triangle, doing a right circuit. Um, there is already a helicopter in the, uh, in, in the triangle, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so yeah, just keeping an eye out for him. A little bit of uh, information on auto rotations. I know there's a bit of a, a misconception that when the uh, helicopter is engine fails, that we just fall like a brick. That's definitely not the case. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very controlled. Um, and obviously this is what you train for day in and day out. To, to do. Um, so yeah, uh, an auto rotation is possible due to physical laws. Because of the only overrunning clutch always allows the um, the rotor system to disengage from the uh, engine drive system whenever the engine RPM is less than the rotor RPM. As the helicopter descends, the upward airflow um, through the rotor discs drives the main rotors, the main gearbox, which in turn drives the tail rotor. Uh, so you still got those control systems working, you can still fly, you can still control everything. It's just um, there's no engine connected to the main rotors anymore. And uh, obviously you're simulating an engine failure. And this is what we call a state of auto rotation. So even though there is no engine connected to the main rotors, which can be a little daunting at, at first, and obviously you do fall fairly fast, but yeah, once we... Uh, 
get flying, I'll um, I'll sort of talk you through what I'm looking at, what gauges I'm looking at, and uh, and how we go about doing that. So we're hover taxiing down this taxiway. Um, the is going to give me a engine failure while we're hovering. So you'll see what that looks like. Switched off the governor, which is that blue light, uh, which just controls engine rotor RPM, engine RPM um, automatically. There's the engine failure. Immediate left pedal to counteract that note to the right. Um, there's a saying that says left pedal, engine failure, right pedal, tail rotor failure. Obviously we can't simulate a tail rotor failure because it's something mechanically we need to break, but in this case we can simulate an engine failure. So yeah, a few things that uh, that happened there. If we're just looking at that digital screen, um, you would have seen that the, uh, the engine RPM uh, bled off um, as the uh, the engine failure uh, happened, um, engaged pretty much full left pedal uh, just to counteract that uh, that nose going right, and um, yeah, it was very controlled, very quick. Uh, so obviously not very high. Uh, things are going to happen really, really quickly. So you have to be really on your toes. Um, which was one thing I found very different. Obviously, you don't use your pedals this much in a fixed wing. Um, obviously, in helicopter, you're constantly on your pedals because uh, the three controls uh, pretty much uh, interlink with each other and affect each other in some form. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what an engine fan in the hover looks like. It's not that uh, not that bad. Uh, we're just going to do another one quickly. Um, so see, governor's come off, so you can anticipate, uh, anticipate it to happen uh, any moment now. Instructor's going to say 3, 2, 1, engine failure. And just watch for that left pedal and the gauge, that big round gauge. The needle's going to go all the way to the left. There we go. So yeah. Very controlled. Obviously, you're just looking to keep that nose as straight as possible so you don't tilt over because obviously that would be quite bad. Okay, with the engine failures in the hover behind us, we're going to be now looking at some water rotations. So, we're in a hover, we're uh, just calling for clearance to depart. Just going to do a clearing turn to the right, uh, just to check and see if there is any traffic around us um, that we can see or that's moved in um, while we were doing our other tasks around the triangle. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just basically a lookout turn. Again, checking, no warning lights, oil T's and P's on the green, and uh, car heats on also. The gauge at the uh, top left is our airspeed indicator, We're looking for 45 knots, and climbing out at 500 feet on our VSI, which is the two gauges um, at the bottom, the left one is the VSI, so again, 45 knots and 500 feet. Here we go, nose forward into uh, transitional lift. It's out 45, nose can come up. I do a left bank. And again, we're going to be looking for 50 knots, climbing out at 500 feet per minute. And most important is our after takeoff checks. So we're going to be looking at warning lights, if there's any warning lights out. The engine instruments, uh, so the oil temperature, pressure, fuel gauge, uh, fuel pressure is uh, all in the green. 
and our carb heat is still on auto and uh, obviously because we're climbing out we just want to check above us make sure no one's above us in this case there was quite a lot of traffic so we are going to stick to um, 800 feet between seven and 800 feet just to give us a bit of distance between between them but normal circle altitude at Goodwood uh, for helicopters is 900 feet <laughs> setting on our downwind uh, for the triangle so we're going to do our free debt checks which is fuel and um, that uh, sort of gauge on the right side of the display um, sort of got a little blue bar there that's our fuel that we're carrying so we're going to check our fuel radio we're still set to goodwood engine again no warning lights oils t's and p's on the green and uh, car beat is on auto direction as I said, right down went for the triangle, altitude, checking out altitude, and we're sitting at around 700 feet. Um, normally, like I said, we would be around eight, 900 feet, but uh, in this instance, we just want to give ourselves a little bit of separation between the traffic around us. And uh, trim, uh, trim for the aircraft is uh, set, and our transponder, which is our Squawk code is still set to 7000. Coming around, turning onto base and lining up good wood in front of us. Trying to maintain 700 for that auto rotation. So getting ready for that auto rotation, left pedal, aft cyclic, lower the collective, looking for 50 knots on that uh, airspeed indicator and just maintaining our rotor RPM which is that round uh, circle um, on the digital display, just keeping that in the green arc. As you can see it's very slow, very controlled, um, although we are falling at about 1500 feet per minute. Coming in, coming in, bit of a ground rush, flaring, flaring, and engine engaged. And we're back in the hover. Um, as you can see, still had a lot of control, no issues. Um, only thing to really look out for is just to monitor that speed, 50 knots, and just maintain the engine, sorry, the rotor RPM in that green arc.
enjoyed that episode. I had a lot of fun uh, making it for you guys. Um, just a disclaimer again, as I mentioned, obviously I'm not an instructor. Um, please, uh, this is not to be used on uh, real world training, uh, real world scenarios. I'm uh, just giving you a bit of an example on my experience of an auto rotation. You know, just to show people that if you do ever have an engine failure in a helicopter, you can very easily walk away from it. It's not the end of the world, and um, yeah, you'll be able to land safely. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. We're just arriving back um, at the hangar. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, obviously, if you have any comments, please keep them PG. But uh, yeah, look forward to uh, any questions you have. And um, thank you very much for coming along for the ride. Much appreciated.